Hi everyone! In this video, we'll take a look at an automated system that helps you find the best performing reels from your competitors, or any Instagram profiles you're interested in. You'll be able to automatically collect stats, analyze their content, see how engaging their videos are, and use those insights to boost your own accounts more effectively. Hope you like the idea. If you do, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And let's jump right into how it all works. Let me start by showing you the final result right away. This is a fully functional system. It's not just a collection of templates. It's a real working tool you can use in practice. Building it isn't exactly easy if you're not familiar with the tech, so pay close attention. If you're planning to build it yourself, make sure to follow every step carefully. There are some tricky and not so obvious details. If you'd rather have it done for you, check the links in the description. We can help set it all up. You just provide a list of competitors you're interested in, and the system will automatically track their activity status. If an account has posted within a certain number of days, Let's say within the last two days, it's considered active. If there haven't been any new videos for longer than that, based on the time frame you set, the account is marked as inactive. The system also calculates average and median metrics, like views, likes, and comments. Now, one thing to note. Occasionally, there can be small errors in the parsing or analysis process, but that's rare. In this example, videos were collected over just three days, so the data might still be a bit raw. But once more stats are gathered, the system will calculate stable weighted averages over a longer period, all automatically. After analyzing all the sources, the system builds a table like this. It detects the type of video, whether it's a talking head, something unclear, or something that doesn't fit the usual categories. We'll go over how the detection rules work a bit later in the video. It also assigns a category based on your own custom rules, so you can immediately see what type of content you're dealing with. And of course, it calculates engagement levels. A video is considered early hot if it's only a few hours old, or maybe one or two days, and it has already reached 60% of the expected engagement, based on the best median performance for that account. That means it's gaining traction quickly. A video is marked as hot if it performs 20% better than the median metrics across the entire profile. You can adjust these thresholds to fit your needs. Tighten the criteria to get fewer reels, but with stronger ideas, for example. For each reel, you'll see a direct link, the number of views, likes, and comments, how many days ago it was posted, the post date, and the date it was added to the system. You'll also see the video duration, the description, and the content, including the hook and the main text extracted from the video. And the system can automatically translate the content into any language you specify, so you can analyze competitors in any market, spot high-performing ideas, and adapt them into your target language. In this example, the translation is into German. Next, the content goes through moderation, either approval or rejection. There are also some hidden fields here, extra data points that aren't necessary to see all the time, so you can keep the view clean. These metrics are calculated automatically. For visual clarity, they're hidden. But if you're building this yourself, just know that these values are pulled from a connected table with source data. That's where the engagement level is calculated from. These columns are just service fields used for the calculation, so we can hide them for now. At this stage, our main task is to review the content and decide, approve or reject. If you're building your own version, you'll know exactly how this part works. The goal here is to confirm whether the idea is worth saving. For example, if you reject an idea, it disappears from the list. If you approve it, the idea moves into production. It's copied to the production tab along with all the data, so you can manage it from there. This includes the video link and its translation into the language you need. Say your video is in English but you speak German. The text will appear in your target language. You can edit the text with a prompt to adapt it to your style, rather than just copying it verbatim. We'll cover this process in more detail later. From there, you manage everything within your workflow, moving items through statuses as needed. So the Reels ideas you like get moved into the production tab, making it easier to focus only on what matters without the rest of the database cluttering your view. You can also filter by columns to find exactly what you need, for example, by the number of days. Filter for videos posted yesterday or today by setting the days filter to less than or equal to two. So you can spot fresh content. You can do the same for engagement levels, add a filter to show only hot videos or rising stars. Since data updates over time, a video posted 10 days ago might start going viral later. The system will keep updating that video stats for the number of days you specify in the settings. Let's clear the filters for now. In settings, you decide how often videos update, so older videos get refreshed stats too. There's also a filter on the review. Column that shows only items with pending status, so once you click approve or decline, those ideas disappear from the list to keep your view clean. You can review and process everything once a day, approving or rejecting, and keep the table tidy. So, we've covered how this works in your daily workflow as it appears in Notion tables. Now, let's look at how the system is built, in case you want to set it up yourself. 
Again, it's important to follow everything carefully. This requires skills above average, especially because some parts involve coding, which is critical here. To start, you can use a scheduled trigger. Here's a test example. The trigger runs once a day at 4 a.m. to update everything. There's no need to update more often than that. Hourly updates aren't really useful because monitoring this table every hour doesn't make sense. Checking once a day is enough to see what's new. You could update every four to eight hours to get fresher stats, but less than eight hours probably isn't worth it. Videos aren't posted that frequently, and frequent updates put a heavier load on the computing services, which cost money. So consider your budget when deciding how often to run these updates. Since every time videos are downloaded and processed by AI, it uses resources. Once the trigger is set, the process starts by setting variables. For example, you enter the Apify ID of the scraper service you want to use to parse Instagram data. Next, you set how many days back to parse, for example, the past seven days. Parsing older reels like 10 to 20 days old usually isn't useful. You also specify how many results to parse per account. If you have 10 accounts and you set it to load up to three videos each, that means only the last three reels per account will be fetched to determine activity status. No need to load very old videos. If you know the accounts post about one or two videos a day, it makes sense to set a higher limit, say 20 videos over 10 days, to keep older stats updated as well. The maximum day setting helps define whether an account is active or dormant. If someone hasn't posted in more than two days, this status will automatically be set to dormant. Then you specify the language you want the content translated into. You provide competitor sources in any language. The system analyzes everything and translates the content into your chosen language. You set this here. From there, the process runs automatically, gathering data based on the parameters you've set. First, we take all sources listed in Notion, all entries from that table. At the start, we only need the Instagram usernames to add a new source. If you already have an existing source, just copy its username. It's best to copy everything after Instagram.com from the profile URL, then paste it here. That's how you add a new source. When loading, the source is selected and processed automatically. All the info about its reels is added and updated. You don't need to manually upload any data. It all happens behind the scenes. To add a user, just enter their Instagram login. We load all the sources and then build a request to the Apify service. Here's the key. Since Apify accepts only one request at a time, we combine all the usernames into a single list. We generate a list of URLs to parse. At the same time, we create a map linking each username to its corresponding Notion page, so we can update the right page later and assign each reel to its proper source author. We save the username with its Notion page ID beforehand. We also combine all user lists into one URL for the request. Then we start the parsing process by sending a request with the scraper ID stored in our variables as the author and build the query request. This query specifies what data to get, like how many days back and how many results per account based on Appify's template. The query is sent as JSON for processing. Next, we get the status of this request. Because parsing a website is a time-consuming task that isn't ready immediately, it runs in the background. So the next step is to check the status of this process. We select the get run method, which exists by ID. We take the ID from the previous stage that was generated here. If it's completed, our goal is for the status to become succeeded. Succeeded means it's done, in process, ready. Ready means it is loading but isn't yet completed. This means the request has been received by the service, and a successful status means that the request has already been executed. So when it's given, we take all the data that has been loaded through the get data set items method, and then we process it. When you're setting up the Appify service, this is done through Appify. Sometimes you need to click install node, install this service so you can use it. It doesn't come by default. If you have a new version, you can see I only have one update here, which means the version is the newest. Make sure all your nodes here are using the latest version, because something in older versions might not work. This is also important to consider if you're doing this yourself. And our next task is to get the statuses. We already have a list of all reels, and we do two things. We check when the last video was posted to determine if the status is active or dormant, and assign them a page in Notion. That is, for each page to arrange, for each reel to specify which Notion page they belong to. What we formed here as a map of pages, map, that for a certain login, there's a certain page. And here we already specify, each reel has its author's login, the owner is passed, and we specify for this reel on which source's page it's located. So this is the mapping that we did here. We're already using it. This is a complex point. Well, you need to be a developer here or seek help. Our task is to match each reel to the page where its source is located. Next, we determine if this is the owner, because sometimes if a reel is reposted or there's a collaboration, multiple authors are listed, and consequently, they won't have a page ID. So in this map of logins, we won't have the login we need. The login of the reel's author will not be the one we specified here. They have a collaboration. This author has this reel on their page, but they're not the author, so their name is different. 
And accordingly, we don't have such a page in Notion, so we skip all such collaborations. Well, we check that this is the owner, and the owner here is determined by having a Notion page specified in the previous step. And if everything is good, then we update these statistics in Notion for all reels. We determine if the status is active or dormant, write its full name, that is, the account name, not the login, but the account name, and we'll insert a link to this account. These parameters, link, status, and account name are written automatically. All this data is already taken, calculated, median likes are specified here. This is calculated by a formula from the adjacent table, median values for all reels, how many are uploaded, these columns are duplicated so that it's not a rollup method, i.e. not a rollup property, but rather a static property so that later in Reels we can calculate engagement metrics based on these figures, because rollups can't be used there. This is also a relatively complex point, but you need to know these numbers if you're going to reproduce this yourself. They're needed in the table. You can hide them so they don't catch your eye. Median values are formed anyway, so these were also service fields. Next, that is, we have formed, that is, all our reels are loaded. Our next task is to form them into a single list so that we don't have to get all reels in a loop. We need all branches, all loaded reels to be formed into one list so that we only call the getReels method once. Our task now is to get all reels from here so that in the future we can also determine if this reel is already in the database and just needs its metrics updated or if it needs to be loaded. So all videos aren't reloaded 10 times, it's determined based on what's in the database to more efficiently use AI resources for analyzing everything we do. So in this code, we get all reels. And then in this code, we look at the reels we've loaded, also compiling a map of ready reels. And for those reels that were called via API and parsed, we check if this code is complex, but essentially you need to understand approximately whoever understood. All the code isn't hidden. Anyone who understands what this is about can replicate it. We check all existing pages by source, and the source is precisely our username in order to find. By source we check if this page already exists, this reel, or if it doesn't exist yet. So if it exists, initially we set that it was created as false. If it exists, it will remain that way. And if it doesn't exist, the status will be marked as created, and additional parameters will be added. Caption. Link to the video, when it was uploaded, duration, and so on. These are the fields we need specifically for uploading the video. This is what we determine. With this code, we create a verification of these reels that we loaded here from the database with those reels that we received here from this database from the service. That is, we compare the newly parsed ones with those that we already have in the database. We form the corresponding variables. And then we check through this cycle, go through all these variables and verify if it was created or updated. If updated, we only update the parameters here. The number of comments, likes, and views are updated, meaning those metrics that are new, if not updated. We download this video. The parser service provides a link in the dataset, provides a link to the video on Instagram, one that can be downloaded, not just to the reels in the browser, but specifically one that can be downloaded. So we download this video, then we upload it to Gemini. That is, here, if the video is larger than 20 megabytes, it's made universally so that the video can be larger than 20 megabytes. It needs to be uploaded additionally to the Gemini service in advance, beforehand, so that the chat can analyze it, already respond to it, to this video. That is, the video is uploaded in advance, not together with the prompt, especially for large videos. And further, the chat cannot immediately analyze this video. It needs some time to process it. Therefore, one minute is initially set here. A request for the status of this file is sent. That is, we get this file via the API link and its status will be indicated. And we check that if its status should be active, if it's active, it means the file is uploaded and ready to work, meaning the chat can work with it. Next, we form the prompt that we need to process this video. That is, here are all the instructions that actually process the video. You say that you're a transcriber. Make a transcription of this video in the language that exists. That is, we get the original transcription in order to later record the voiceover, meaning a quality transcription, not just to break it down into words, but specifically so that it's readable text. Next, we determine what hook to identify in this video effectively in the first seconds of the video. Then, determine the category of this content based on the following rules. Here, we specify for ourselves what rules to use to determine this video category. For example, if it's business, if there's advice about business, if cooking, if they're cooking, then cooking. And it's clear that you'll choose competitors and analogs based on your topic. So you can divide your topics into categories. If you're, let's say, about entrepreneurship, you can set business, marketing, add finances if there's advice about finances, and so on. Add your own rules for processing categories and leave it as unidentified if you couldn't determine it. This can happen, especially if the reel has no video or no text and just a couple of sentences where you can't understand what it's about. So do that. You determine the category for yourself independently. And the same goes for video format, based on the following rules. Talking head, that is, if it's a talking head video, if it's a drawn animation, 
That is, here we specify what it is if such and such rule applies. And you can also determine this for yourself. You can use this not as a video format, but say a type. Specify some of your own types. So you'll have two types of categorization, by categories and by type. So you set such tags and create your rules by analogy. Next, we say to make a full translation. Translate this video into the language you specified in the settings. That is, your language that you need. And we say, return the result in clean JSON format, without any additional frills, in the format that we need. That is, we select transcription, hook, category, format, translation, and hook translation. We tell it to return such JSON. Next, we form this JSON. We check it, since it's still text. We remove all the excess, transform this text directly into JSON. We check these parameters to ensure they're in JSON. That is, if they don't exist, we'll fill them with empty elements. We initially take the current element that's being processed now, the loaded one, and add this parsed parameter to it with these additional parameters in order to add it to the database later. So in is created. Here update takes the current element and its data is updated. And similarly, we take this element from is create, but since we've already gone through all these steps, we take Go back, take it, and combine it with this data that we got in Gemini, so we get a complete element that we parsed, plus this data we added to it. And then, we directly create the element. That is, we take what we parsed, caption, a, uh, or hook. So here, for the title, we take the hook. If it didn't parse, like if Google processed something unsuccessfully, Gemini, then we take the caption, cut the first 50 characters. And then, we take all the fields in the same way, data, description, and so on. All the parameters of the real that are here, plus the directly parsed parameters, are loaded into the real. So if our real is new, all these fields will be filled, including metrics. If it's being updated, then only the metrics are updated. And there's one more point here, that in this, in Notion, you can use upload only 2,000 in a text field. So here this, a transcription, is cut to 1,800, based on the fact that there will also be a hook, plus these service labels. You can remove them and, for example, leave only the transcription output here, and then only text, but still cut it to two. 2000. Well, 1995 to have a small buffer. So it's cut here, meaning if the reel is too long, has a lot of text, it will be cut to 1800 characters. These are notion limitations. Well, most likely the meaning will be clear, and the same with the translation. All of this is trimmed here. The category will be directly from the parse data. It will be here. So we periodically run a process that regularly takes our database, collects all reels, then updates accounts, sets activity status for new accounts that have been added here assigns additional parameters, then loads all the reels that we already have in the database, looks at them, compares them with those that were in Notion, or more precisely, those that were parsed dataset items plus database, compares them and determines if they need to be loaded or updated. If updated, it only updates the statistics. If loaded, it uploads the video to Gemini, creates a prompt to process this video, analyzes the result, and creates a record in Notion. It's important to pay close attention to everything, of course, as I showed, since if you make any mistake here, it won't work. So this process is quite complex. But on the other hand, it's not just a template, but an actual working solution that creates such a competitor analysis table for you, automatically spotting new ideas every day. This will be your summary of what's happening in the market. So you can review these ideas and improve your account promotion metrics. If you need help developing something like this or something more complex, whatever you need to do, contact me using the links in the description. If you like the idea, I'd appreciate your like. Subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos.